All right, Shalom. This is Harold Wamba and Yashallah of the GMS Lions Den Camp. I want to say, Kaul Halayim, La Yahweh, Ba'ashim Yahushai, Ba'ashim Harakat Kodash, Ma'amad. Double honor to the elder apostles of GMS and the elders. Shalom to Yaakim, Nakbati, and my children that believe in sincerity and truth around the four corners of the earth. Um, I want to go into this topic dealing with, um, you know, the seven heads and ten horns. They, they are turning to hate uh, America. You know, um, they got that whole uh, nuclear deal um, that Trump might be pulling out of on uh, May 12th. You know, and uh, you know, Iran said, "Hey, if you pull out, then they're going to restart the nuclear uh, program." Then you got Israel saying they're going to strike if Iran starts the nuclear program. Then you got uh, Russia saying if they pull out, they're going to they, they're gonna, uh, you know come at at America. And at Israel, you got Turkey talking about going into Greece. Then you got uh, France, Germany, and uh, the UK. You know, and I'm pretty sure other European countries that's all saying to America, uh, do not pull out of that deal because if they do, they'll be forced. These European countries will be forced to um, put sanctions onto uh, Iran, which they don't want to do. And that would, that would build a military conflict in Europe dealing with the um, Middle East. All right, so they saying that that would basically be America drawing them into war now. The least of, the least of them drawing them out too. You know, so um, they all despise in America right now saying, hey, don't pull us into this war. And that's basically what they might do if Trump pulls out, which he's planning on doing it. So that's scriptural because the scriptures say uh, the European Union, which represents the dragon... All right, um, the extension of it is NATO. You know, it's going to hate the horror, which is America. Right, I'm going to get into that scripture. But I'm going to play this uh, clip. The fate of the Iran nuclear deal remains in the balance despite efforts by the leaders of France and Germany and now Britain's foreign secretary to persuade the U.S. not to pull out at the end of the week. Boris Johnson is the latest representative of the so-called EU3 who helped negotiate the agreement in 2015 to meet with the U.S. administration. On Sunday, French President Emmanuel Macron told German online Spiegel if Trump were to simply withdraw from the deal, that would mean opening Pandora's box. It could mean war. Mm. But he added, I don't believe that Donald Trump wants war. Mm. Meanwhile, Iranian President Hassan Rouhani has warned that there are plans to respond to any move by the U.S. on the agreement. If America, he says, leaves the nuclear accord, it will soon see that this will entail historic remorse for it. Tehran insists its nuclear program is entirely peaceful and says it considers the deal non-renegotiable. It signed it back in 2015, agreeing to curb its nuclear program in return for the lifting of crippling sanctions. Trump has strongly criticized the agreement, calling it insane. He's unhappy that it only limits Iran's nuclear activities for a fixed period and doesn't stop the development of ballistic missiles. He's vowed to pull out on May the 12th unless the so-called flaws of the deal are fixed. Evelyn Laverick, Euronews. Mm. <laughs> this guy here man prideful prideful uh trump you know so they say plan on pulling out of the deal because it's uh they saying it's not set up correctly for america to be to be in the benefit of america but you can't just create a contract and then all of a sudden just want to pull out a year later you know just because it benefits you so now all these nations are talking about war with america all right <clears throat> now they're saying uh trump everything he's talking about everything he's doing is, is dealing with war he, he creating enemies you know and it says uh this is psalms 55 and 20 he had put forth his hands such as uh put he had put forth his hands against such as be at peace with him and that's what esau has done in general but now satan is divided against satan meaning esau against esau all right, and, and heathen against heathen, kingdom against kingdom, right? And now, uh, the spearhead, uh, uh, America, the horror, it says what? He, uh, he have broken his covenant. 
See, now he's breaking his covenant, his contracts. Uh, the the words of his mouth were smoother than butter, but war is in his heart and it is in his mind. It was in his plans. His words were softer than oil, yet were drawn swords, man. So that's what he that's what he's planning, man. Everything he speaks is uh, destruction. You know what I mean? So they saying they don't know if he wants war now. Yes, he does. The same plans that Israel has. All right, this is Revelation 17 and 1. And there came one of the seven angels, which had this, the seven vials, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, and I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. And that, that great whore is talking about America, that, that ruling as a king or a ruler over many peoples, just like Babylon did. All right, um... And it says, uh, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the, habit and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. And they have, they've been drunk, drunken off the uh, philosophies and the, uh, the, the unjust laws, you know, you know, all, all the, the doctrines and religions of America, you know, so it's the, um, and that's just it, man. They were blinded by the by the wealth of this place, and the dollar. All right, that's their witchcraft. So they were blinded by the enchantments. All right, the Chaldee, the beauty of the Chaldees. The Chaldees represents the Magi's or witches. So they were putting enchantments on these nations, and now that shit, the Most High is uh, making it, taking a veil off these nations' eyes to see, and lifting up the skirt of America to see all the wickedness, and the thievery, thievery that they that they've been doing that this inferior nation has been doing the only thing that they have that's um high is their pride right and they got rich off of that dollar which is a um, fiat currency a floating currency which is um not real currency at all so all the all the world gave america all their items and trust and contracts you know <laughs> you know so now um now they're realizing that, you know. So uh, anyway, it says, uh, it says in there, Revelation 17 and 1, and there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vials and talked with me, saying, Unto me come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. All right? It represents like a sea of people. Which whom, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast full of names of blasphemy having seven heads and ten horns. Right, the seven heads and ten horns uh, represents the EU as I just spoke of, the European Union. All right, and, and three members represent France, um, Germany, and uh, what do you call um, uh, the UK? And the UK represents Scotland, uh, and um, you know all the other Ireland. You know what I mean? The, 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 in Britain, All right? And, and um, whatever other nation is over there. You got Germany, Eastern and Western Germany, and you, and you have. Uh, the Netherlands and Luxembourg, which which that which that represents, all right, France being originally called the Franks, so those all those original uh, European nation, European Union uh, countries of the dragon, according, according to the scriptures, all right, the seven heads and ten horns, you know. Now it says um, in the, in the scarlet colored beast that represents NATO, and NATO is an extension of the European Union that was created as a, um, a a military branch of protection for the European Union the dragon all right and uh, so they all invested and put their uh, bid in the ones that agreed from the uh, European Union all right all right um, this is some quick notes real quick of course you had NATO the North Atlantic Treaty Organization which was created um, 
you know, really around 1950, but uh, it was signed uh, April 4th, 1949. All right, so um, it's called the North Atlantic Treaty Alliance. is an intergovernmental military alliance between several North American and European countries based on the North Atlantic Treaty that was signed on April 1949, right? Because after 1941, uh, America uh, bombed uh, Hiroshima and Nagasaki uh, for these European countries and also for, uh, um, um, you know, the NATO countries. And that's when NATO was formed and they brought America in as a spearhead in all their attacks, all right? But um, Britain didn't join yet. Britain joined around, uh, here you go right here, uh, you know, around 19, uh, what is it, really around 1970. All right. There you go. Where is it at? It says uh, the United Kingdom. It says, when did Britain decide to join the United European Union? All right. The United Kingdom made its first application to join in 1961. It was quickly apparent that there was a danger of political isolation within US Western Europe. Commonwealth states were rushing to do deals with the new bloc, and it had American support. This application was vetoed by the French government in 1963, with a second application vetoed by the French again in 1967. It was only in 1969 that the green light was given to negotiations for the British membership. See, so that's when they were finally allowed to join. And I'm getting to that scripture in a minute in Revelation 17. All right, the United Kingdom joined the European uh, Economic Community. That's what that was before it was called the European Union. All right, um, as it then was on January 1st, 1973. So with Denmark and Ireland. So that was around 1973 when uh, Britain was allowed to join. So I'm gonna get to that scripture to uh, get the more understanding. Now it says, uh, first Revelation 17 and 3. So she, so he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast, and that beast is natal, which was, as we see, was created, um, you know, between uh, 1949 up to 1951. All right full of names of blasphemy having seven heads and ten horns so the seven heads and ten horns uh represent right here the seven heads let me just type it up and then pull this back up all right right here you have um the seven heads representing greece france which used to be called the franks right in france like you say speaking frankly all right, um, the original Franks, um, <clears throat> well, actually, we, we were Spain, Rome, Germania Major, and Germania Minor, America, and Britain, which Britain joined, uh, as we know now, around 1973. And that's important, uh, dealing with the scripture. The Ten Horns represent uh, Belgium, and these are all basically um, uh, fractions of the original seven. I right, broken down and divided, you know. So it says uh, Belgium, Denmark, France, Italy, Luxembourg, Netherlands, which is basically Eastern Germany, um, Greece, Ireland, all right, England. You see that in Western Germany. So you have, um, you still have the UK or Britain, UK countries up in there, all right, Ireland and um, England. <clears throat> all right. So um, let me get back to the scripture. So it says, uh, verse 3, it says, So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And those names are blasphemy, blasphemous, man. You know? Um, and it says, uh, And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet and uh, color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls and having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication, meaning all her idol, idol worship and idolatry. And America has so many idols in this place 
you know, as we call it, the melting pot. So all the judgments for each, you know, each idol or each um, sin has a judgment to it. So America bears all of those judgments in one that's coming to this place. All right, that's why all the judgments of Egypt, judgments of Sodom and Gomorrah, you know, all the judgments of different uh, kingdoms of Babylon, all gonna fall on America. All right, Nineveh, because they worshiping all those same idols. Now, um, and their philosophies and their, and their witchcrafts and their systems, their dollar systems, their, you know, currency systems, slavery systems. How about that? You know, so um, now it says. Verse 5, and upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon. So a forehead, that's talking about America, man. All right. Uh, Mystery Babylon, the great, the mother of harlots. The mother of harlots, that's what they call it, the, the um, most, the proudest of all of uh, Edom, America. All right. Uh, it says, um, the, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. You know, and it says, uh, and where was that? And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Yahweh when I saw her. And I wondered with great admiration. And uh, that happened with slavery, you know, uh, and also when they came and conquered the Native Americans, the, the Northern Kingdom and the Southern Kingdom, taking us back and forth to Portugal. And training, training us, and, and working us into being slaves, and building their society here for trade. All right. Uh, now it says verse seven, and the, and the angel said unto me, and that happened around the, uh, the, in between the fifteen hundreds and the eighteen uh, hundreds, man. All right, nineteen hundreds, all the way up to the nineteen hundreds. And the angel said unto me, Wherefore didst thou marvel? I will tell thee the mystery of the woman, right, uh, and of the beast that carrieth her. So NATO uh, is, a, is a protection for America, and also America has been a protection for NATO, for the NATO country. So anybody goes that goes to war with America, um, these NATO countries come together and fund America and also protect America with their militaries. All right, with different fashions of their militaries. So just like uh, what you call September 11th, when that happened, uh, even though it was America um, government uh, agents that, that pulled it off, that still got them funding to do their uh, war over in the Middle East All right, by the uh, European Union and NATO. So it says, I will, I will tell thee, verse 7, I will tell thee the mystery of the woman uh, that's the woman, the, the, whore, uh, the daughter of Babylon. Uh, um, it says, and of the beast that carry of her, which have the seven heads and ten horns, right? Because the seven heads and ten horns all came together and gave funding to create in the military and, and resources to create this uh, military alliance called NATO. And it says, um, so they gave their power into it. Verse 8, it says, The beast that thou sawest was and is not, and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into perdition. And it's talking about Rome. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder whose name were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world. When they behold the beast that was and is not, and yet is, man. Because right? Rome fell during the time of... Uh, what was his name? Um, uh, Nerva. All right, around 90 uh, AD, 98 AD. You know, because it was a civil war that happened, and Nerva, Nerva took over. He, uh, he was he was coming up in the ranks under. Uh, 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 he, he, you know, he he came up into the ranks. What's his name? Uh, Domitian. If I'm, if I'm saying it right, is he the Domitian? All right. Um, he came up in the ranks. He became consul under uh, uh, dealing with uh, Vespasian and Domitian, all right? So uh, once he moved up, and what was the guy's name that died? Let me go ahead and pull it up. Because this was when they really started falling 
it was called Western Rome. You know, it was it was all divided in the Civil War. Uh, you know, called the uh, the Crisis of the Third Century. You know, um, when uh, Rome, Rome was in turmoil and it was split into two fashions, just like the scriptures say. You know, with the statue of Nebuchadnezzar. I think it's in Daniel chapter two, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and then Daniel chapter seven. Now. Uh, Nerva was a jake you can ignore the statue right here but he was a so called negro and his bloodline they was the ones ruling they were called the seven emperors and then after him you had uh, a little bit more turmoil at the time of the five emperors meaning they were just getting killed all in one year in 192 AD you know uh, anybody that came into power they were getting slaughtered and then uh, the last ruler I think his name was Domitian and he was killed by some by some jakes <laughs> some jakes killed him man uh it was called freedmen they, they came together and killed him and that way uh they set up uh, uh severus to be able to rule so timmy and severus and that's when the severus the severian blood the uh, dynasty began to rule all right so i'm gonna read this real quick it says nerva so this is when um the roman empire uh fell all right uh and Nerva, a so-called Negro, started ruling. And then a thousand years from this, you know, you start getting into the time that they, uh, they uh, rise back to power, power with the Ottoman Turks. All right. Now it says, um, Nerva, uh, <clears throat> he was Augustus and also Caesar. You know, that's when they were passing that around. The Caesars were usually, uh, were set up as, um, what you would call vice presidents today you had the augustus which was over the actual all of rome or over that area of rome and then you had the caesars that would if something happened to the augustus the caesar would become augustus and then so on and so on all right now it says verse 8 let's say verse 8 like i'm reading the bible so it said november 8th 30 um 30 a.d right January 28, 7th, 98 AD. <clears throat> so that's when he was born, I guess. Now it says, uh, was Roman emperor from 96 to 98. Nerva became emperor at the age of 65 after a lifetime of imperial service under Nero. See, Nero was an Edomite. So that's how Jake was in creeping up in there. You know, they were servants. You know. And the the rulers of the Flavian dynasty, so Nero and them was still ruling over the Flavian dynasty, and um, a vital part in exposing. So like it says, under Nero, he was a member of the imperial entourage and played a vital part in exposing the Pisonian conspiracy. I had the conspiracy of, of Gaius Calpurnius. Piso Piso in 80, uh, 65 AD was a major turning point in the reign of the Roman Emperor Nero. The plot reflected the growing uh, discontent among the ruling class of the Roman state with Nero's increasingly uh, despotic leadership and as a result is a significant event on the road towards uh, uh, his, his whatever. So, okay, that was a conspiracy that happened. So Nero played a big, major part in um, exposing that to Nero. Uh, it was plotting against him. So it says, later, as loyalists, as a loyalist to Flavian, to the Flavians, he attained consulship. And consulship was sort of, uh, it says, a consul held the highest elected political office of the Roman Republic. And ancient romans considered the consulship the highest level of the uh, cursor uh, honorium which is like being a caesar or a dictatorship now uh so that's, that's just like the seat that joseph sat in you know in egypt and you had uh daniel in babylon Nerva was set up the same way and it says uh in 71 and 90 during the reigns of Vespasian and Domitian. See, this is when they was ruling still. Esau. Alright, um, 
and says uh, we just fell around 70 AD. You know what I mean? 73 AD. That was the that was the the last um, our last stand of Masada. You know, so they they had us in, in bondage, man. Now it says the reigns of Aspasian and Domitian, respectively. And that says on eight September eighth, ninety six AD, Domitian was assassinated. So this was when they really fell in a palace conspiracy, you know, involving members of the Praetorian Guard. That was his guard. So he had a lot of jakes in his guard. You know what I mean? A lot of our people was um, centurions or praetorians. And s several of his freedmen. And freedmen, what? That's right here for you. It says freedmen was the Jakes, man. You know, that was our people. It says a freedman was what? A freedman or freed woman is a former slave who, was, who has been released from slavery, usually by legal means. Historically, slaves were freed either by uh, man, manumissions or emancipation a fugitive slave is one who escaped slept slavery by fleeing so he was, it was freedmen and they came together and conspired to kill um, Domitian that's how Domitian died by some jakes right on the same day on the same day he died on 96 September 18th AD um on the same day, Nerva was declared emperor by the Roman state. So that's when Nerva became emperor because he was trusted by the Roman state. So these freedmen, these Jakes knew that, man. If they got rid of the mission, the Edomite, that this Jake would be able to rule. <laughs> and then from then on, they did something called, um, uh, oh, I forgot what it's called, man. I'm going to get probably get that too. I don't want to get too deep into it, but where well, they just, they voted um, I forgot the term of it. Adopted. There you go. Call it uh, uh, adoption. To where they started after Nerva, they did something called adoption, and they um, only elected people of their family, their bloodline, or people they chose to rule after them. And that happened for seven seven emperors, all the way up until um, this, uh, leading into the Severian. Uh, or the time of the five emperors and going into the Severian dynasty up to uh, 192 AD. All right, so it says uh, Nerva was declared emperor by the Roman state senate. This was the first time the senate elected a Roman emperor, so they actually agreed to instead of the, instead of the, uh, the community electing them or the, or, or the or the bloodline, you know, on them stepping up to place. Like, like um, Augustus did after uh, um, Julius Caesar died, you know, this was the first time the Senate elected a Roman senator, an emperor, and that's why America is the same way, man. Uh, the Congress is what put the president in power, not uh, the votes of the people. As the new ruler of the Roman emperor empire, he vowed to restore liberties, which had been curtailed during the uh, autocratic government of Domitian being the Edomite rulership so Jake you know was looking out for his people now this is how he did it it says Nervous this is when we was ruling now it says Nervous brief reign was marred by financial difficulties and his inability to assert his authority over the Roman Empire All right. a revolt by the Praetorian Guard in October 97 essentially forced him to adopt an heir, see, after some deliberation, Nerva adopted Trajan, which was a Jake, a young and popular general as his successor. After barely 15 months in office, Nerva died of natural causes on 27 January 19, uh, 98 AD. Upon his death, he was succeeded and defied, uh, deified by Trajan, all right? And um, now, so they started adopting. Um, I'm just keep going. Although much of his life remains obscure, Nerva was considered a wise and moderate emperor by ancient historians. Nerva's greatest success 
was his ability to ensure a peaceable peaceful transition of power see a transition of power so this is when uh, rome fell started falling all right and then you had constantine that ruled um around 20, 324 a.d when he took down licinius um which was an edomite all right and constantine uh took over and started ruling uh rome in 324 20, a.d and they had the uh the, the first council of nicaea in 325 all right now it says um so that's when what was that all right nerva was considered a wise and moderate emperor by ancient historians nerva's greatest success was his ability to ensure a peaceful transition of power after his death by selecting trajan as his heir thus founding the nerva and antoni antonine dynasty meaning that's their legacy that was their bloodline and there was a uh, seven emperors that ruled all right the the nerva antoni antonine dynasty was a dynasty of seven em roman emperors who ruled over the roman empire from 96 a.d to 192 a.d see these was all jakes right here all right now these are all jakes now after them you had something called let's see if i can find it real quick without pausing it uh here you go right here you had the year of the five emperors it refers to the year 193 a.d so 192 and then going into 193 you had in which there were five claimants for the title of roman emperor pertinax uh, didius julianus uh pesinius niger claudius albinus and septimius severus see that's what started the severian dynasty all right which uh ended with alexander um severus and they had homosexuals all in, it was jake's too man jake started ruling again <laughs> you know so this is how we were ruling for a thousand years uh, you know with the constant constant constantine um dynasty as well you know now it says um this year started a period of civil war so there was a bunch of civil wars just like america's breaking out in civil war now where multiple rulers of vi uh, vied for the chance um to become caesar all right so it says um so you see i was all in the same year 183 183 183 they was all getting plucked off and knocked off until September Severus ran this guy Albinus out of power and that's when he started ruling you know <clears throat> so it says uh where was that the political unrest began with the murder of Com Com uh, Commodus on New Year's Eve 192 once Commodus was assassinated Pertinax was named emperor but immediately aroused um opposition from the Praetorian Guard once again they so he probably was a, a Edom. I'm not sure. I mean, I'm checking into that. I I ain't really looking into that too much, but it could have been some Edomites up in there. That's it. But immediately, um, aroused uh, opposition from the Praetorian Guard. They plotted and carried out his assassination. Pertinax was killed while um, resisting. He had only been emperor for three months. Didius Julianus who purchased the title from the Praetorian Guard uh, succeeded Pertinax but was ousted by Septimius Severus and executed on June 1st Septimius Severus was declared Caesar by the Senate all right so that's when they went to war with um you know Jake went to war with all these people yeah actually it's like it was like it with uh what's his name Pertinax and then also he went to war with this guy here Ni uh, Niger you know so let me get this i'm gonna skip down it says uh the severian dynasty was created right here it was created out of the chaos of 193 a.d man you see that and that's how this place that's how the children of israel is going to be created too in the midst of chaos yeah, right. 
All right, then you had a thousand years later, you know, um, approximately, you had the Ottoman Turks uh, reestablishing the Western Roman Empire. And this is um, just a brief, that's why I said I'm going through brief notes because that's not the focus of this lesson. Um, but since it was on my spirit, I just want to kind of talk about it. It says, uh, the official beginning of the new empire, of which the Western Roman Empire that fell, <clears throat> uh, really started around 96 uh, AD. You know, um, it was was completed under Constantine, you know, and also uh, September Severus. Now it says, um, and it, uh, where was that? The official beginning of the new empire, however, dates from 90, 962 uh, uh, Common Era when Otto I of Germany was crowned king of germany all right so of germany man and proclaimed his realm the holy roman empire of germany all the one continued the policies of maintaining these edomites reestablishing themselves man because they had broken up that's what i was going into the roman empire had broken up you know and they went to war with each other and um and that's where they were they, they had disappeared um the establishment of rome and, and rome had, had disappeared so now his deadly wound was healed and then it got reestablished around this time man all right uh, now it says uh germany was crowned he was he was auto one was crowned king of germany and proclaimed his realm the holy roman empire of germany auto one continued the policies of maintaining a christian nation following charlemagne's example the Holy Roman Empire continued to see itself in this role as an entity champion, championing truth until through a, a slow decline involving political intrigue, almost incessant war, and constant internal strife. It was dissolved in the 1800s. All right, so on and so on. So, yeah, man, so that's when the Roman Empire was starting to be reestablished around the 1200s, all the way to the 1600s, you know, with Caesar Borgia and all of them, man. And so on and so on. And that's when they was ruling for a little season. All right, so this is where I was at, um, Revelation 17 and 8. It says, The beast that thou sawest was and is not, and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit out of Europe. And go into perdition, right? That's what they're doing now. They say that's what they're going. They, uh, they should uh, came out of the bottomless pit just to go into perdition, man. You know. And when did they start coming out under the Ottoman Turks? All right. It started with Nerva all the way up to September Severus. That was complete se severing of of their um their rulership at that time, all the way up until um what do you call um you know, uh, the Ottoman Turks age at like the common era. Now it says, um, and go into perdition, and they that dwell on the earth shall wonder whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world when they behold the beast that was and is not and yet is. See, that's Rome. And here is the mind which hath wisdom, the seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth, right? Those seven heads right here. Seven mountains, right? Same thing. Of course, ain't gonna let me do it. Same thing, you know what I mean? So, seven mountains, all right? <clears throat> Now it says, uh, on which the woman sitteth. And it said, uh, uh, so all these have given their power to NATO. And that's why America was the spearhead of NATO, right? America being one of the spearheads of, of the NATO uh, um, set up. You know what I mean? So now, um, um, so, that, you know, so they basically, uh, uh, what do you call that shit? Exalted America. Now it says, 
on which the woman sitteth. <clears throat> and there are seven kings, f five are fallen, and one is, and the other is not yet come. And when he cometh, he must continue a short space. All right, and that's talking about Britain. Because Britain didn't, Britain didn't join into NATO until 1973. So they weren't even there yet. But America was already part of it. After um, after that situation with Hiroshima and Nagasaki. So America had had already become part of uh, NATO. Alright. So then you had Britain. They, they got into NATO around 1973. So that's what we're talking about right here. Alright. So it says... And there are seven kings, five are fallen, and one is, and the other is not yet come. And when he cometh, he must continue a short space. All right? And he continues a short space, and that's what you have today. It's called the Brexit. And it, uh, it, the European Union has become, what, part iron and part clay now because the Brexit, the, Brit the British exit, the United Kingdom leaving from the um, European uh financial economical and military alliance so they decided to be sovereign and go on their own deal with their own and uh try to try to cling to these heathen nations and do, do deals with these heathen nations and it says these other heathen nations because they're heathens too the beast that was and is not even he is the eighth see that's talking about rome all right and he is of the seven see he's also of the seven see so the one uh it says and one is and the other is not yet come see that's talking about that was rome is already was part of it in america but britain didn't join till later but in verse 11 it says and the beast that was and is not even he is the eighth and that's the talking about rome all right and is of the seven, so he's still of these seven, and go up into perdition, all right? And so that's, they reestablished it really with America. That's the revised Roman Empire, all right? And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings, you know, which have received no kingdom as of yet, but uh, received power as kings one hour with the beast. And that's how they got their power because these nations here, they're all sm smaller sections of the seven heads you know so they um even ireland is under um oppression from britain uh, great britain uh, you know the uk so they received power though for for one hour for a short season you know through their alliances now it says these these have one mind they all have one mind you know just like the tower of babel and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. They did that. They gave their power unto NATO. All right. And it says, um, these shall make war with the Lamb. So when the Lord shows up, uh, these NATO countries, all these, these coalition countries, they're gonna try to go to war with the Lord with this, what they call space programs. And the Lamb shall overcome them. See, he, the Lord gonna show up in the midst of World War Three, according to Second Ezra 13. And in the midst of their war. And the Mr. Armageddon, they're gonna all turn and stop fighting and, and try to fight against Yahweh and, and the holy angels. <clears throat> but they're gonna lose horribly. It says, And the Lamb shall overcome them, for he is Lord of Lords and King of Kings. Alright. <coughs> <clears throat> and they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. So that's talking about 144,000 and one third, whether they appear from heaven with Yahweh or they be uh, lifted up and redeemed from the earth in the day of judgment. And he saith unto me, the waters which thou sawest where the horse sitteth are peoples. See, that's clear. You know, so it's talking about waters, it's talking about the peoples. Just like if you had a concert and they say, uh, do the wave. And you say a wave of people, right? People dive into the sea of people of the concert stage. Now it says, um, where the horosidif are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues all right so many people and the, the ten 
that's what they called America, the, the peacekeeper of the world, which was established by Britain and uh, with that North Atlantic Treaty Organization and shit like that. Now, um, and uh, they became the peacekeepers really after World War II. And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore. And that's what you're seeing today with, uh, as far as uh, YouTube with, with this situation here. Because they hate America. Because they're being forced into a war with Iran and Russia. So they're going to turn and they're going to hate America. You see that once once, they, once Israel, somebody goes into Iran, that's when they're going to all turn. And it's going to be clear that everybody's putting a array round about against Babylon, against America. All right, they all going to choose their sides. Now it says, um, And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore, and shall make her desolate and naked. Right? That's why they, uh, they're being forced into sanctions. Even Iran is being forced into sanctions. Iran can't do deals with any banks in America. So now they say, fuck it, since we can't do deals, let's just dump the dollar. And now um, America put tariffs on these these nations uh, these, uh, um, and also European nations taxing them so they're going to start taxing America they they pulling uh, uh, just putting more debt on America right through there what you call the Illuminati alright Federal Reserve that's ran over there in Europe you see that they're collapsing the dollar the currency man they're playing a martial law for this place the RFID chip so on and so on Alright, so, um, this is what, these shall hate the whore, and shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. So they're going to shoot their missiles on America too. For Yahweh have put in their hearts to fulfill his will, and to agree, and to give their kingdom unto the beast, right, all in agreement, until the words of Yahweh shall be fulfilled, meaning all his prophecies come to pass. And they're coming to pass right now. Like you see in the, the last prophecy with Persians and the Medes, the Iran and Russia, uh, the RFID chip, Mark of the Beast, you know, the elect waking up, the, uh, wars and rumors of wars, earthquakes, um, volcanoes erupting, dollars collapsing, famines. All, everything is at the door, man. Chariots showing up, you, you know, so called UFOs. So this is a beautiful time, man. So his words are being fulfilled. Because the scriptures say, at the end they shall speak and not lie. All right, wait for it, do it, tarry. All right, and it says, um, and the woman which thou sawest is that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. So you hear what he said, man. I'm going to play that clip one more time. The week. Boris Johnson is the latest representative of the so-called eagle. If Trump were to simply withdraw from the deal, that would mean opening Pandora's box. It could mean war. But he added, I don't believe that Donald Trump wants war.